you're looking to improve your career or relationships, or just wanna understand yourself or the world a little bit better, stick around because I've got a secret weapon that you can start using today. I'm your host, Beretta Fleur. So good to be here with you. I am an author, podcaster, and confidence coach, and I help people and entrepreneurs just like you lead happier, healthier, more fulfilled lives. And I do that through my coaching, content, and storytelling. This week on my podcast, Beretta Fleur Du Jour, I began a series on the Enneagram. If you're not familiar with the Enneagram, really quickly, it is a personality typing tool. It started in the 1970s and has been developed over time and has had kind of a revival in the past few years. The Enneagram is widely used. Everybody from people that just wanna know themselves and other people a little bit better to companies, corporations, thought leaders, Tons of use for the Enneagram in our modern world. I have this book, The Wisdom of the Enneagram. If you're looking for an all-in-one resource, enneagraminstitute.com. It's full of information, as well as a really accurate Enneagram personality typing quiz. The Enneagram is made up of nine personality types, and those are number one, the reformer, number two, the helper, number three, the achiever, number four, the individualist, number five, the investigator, number six, the loyalist, number seven, the enthusiast, number eight, the challenger, and number nine, the peacemaker. Just to remind you, there's no good or bad personality type. As far as the Enneagram typing system goes, not one personality type is better than the other. This is a guide to understand why you might do the things that you do or why others may do the things that they do, as well as what motivates them. Because in interacting with people on a daily basis, it really does help to know what motivates somebody. So those nine types are divided into triads of motivations that kind of make people do what they do. So with the triad of eight, nine, and one, that's the instinctive triad. That's kind of what they go with. They go with their gut. And they also spend a lot of time trying to get away from or avoid that feeling of anger or rage. And they do this with behaviors or habits that kind of keep that anger and that rage at bay. The feeling triad, which is two, three, and four, which is the helper, the achiever, and the individualist, all operate under the guise of avoiding the feeling of shame. The third triad is the thinking triad, and that is five, six, and seven. Now the thinking triad kind of leads with their head. They're usually up in here instead of down in here or down in the gut. So thinking triad people spend a lot of time trying to think their way out of or get away from their fear. Because to a person who is a five, six, or seven in this thinking triad, to feel fear is pretty much the kiss of death. They would rather do anything in the world than feel that fear. The best thing to do is to focus on those feelings and it, whatever might speak to you as far as if you find your motivators sort of being more in the shame or anger or fear sort of camp, then you might have a better understanding in which to narrow down your personality. One word of advice when you are typing your personality, a lot of times we tend to get drawn toward those personality types we think are cool or fun or good or badass or interesting. And the personality type that we are tends to make us kind of cringe. When you kind of feel that squeamishness, that might be actually a good indicator that you're on the right track to what is your true personality. Because it is kind of jarring to look at ourselves in the way of, oh, I do all this stuff because I'm angry, or I do all this stuff because I'm ashamed, or I do all this stuff because I really don't want to be scared. In my podcast, I go into an example of what happened to me this week as a seven and how I was able to use the Enneagram to kind of get me out of this hole that I was digging myself in. Typing your personality is a journey, so don't be afraid to spend a little bit of time on that. And at the same time, don't try to overthink it. I did do an exercise on my podcast to help you home in on your motivating emotion. If you listen to it, that is episode nine an introduction to the Enneagram, and you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts, Google, Apple, or on berettafleur.com slash podcast. There is a personality test out there. 
I would go with the Ready Test, which is from Enneagram Institute. You can also find it in the Wisdom of the Enneagram if you do ever pick up this book. I have it on my preferred reading list and I also have it linked in the show notes. If you've typed yourself and you've found that you're a certain number, the next thing that we would get into is the wing. Now the wing can be kind of confusing. I don't recommend going into it until you've typed yourself. Basically a wing is, you look at the Enneagram circle, right? And you see all those numbers. Well, the number that you are, let's say you're a two, you have a choice of a wing between a three, which is the achiever, or a one, which is the reformer. So depending on kind of what your personality swings toward, that will give you an indicator of what your wing is. For me, wings tended to be a little distracting, so I didn't focus too much on my wing. I don't feel that it matters as much at first as does determining your true personality type. So about the little lines. So inside the lines of the Enneagram, you will see little arrows that connect certain numbers. And these are very interesting to me. These lines are the key that you can use to kind of start catching yourself or start understanding others when you find that they're getting a little intense or you know there's tension or things are about to blow up or you just feel like whoa you're having a really rough time or somebody else is having a really rough time so those little lines are called the direction of disintegration and the direction of integration and what that means is when you are moving in the direction of the disintegration you're moving toward the ugly or not so pretty parts of another type of personality. According to the Enneagram, when I say the uglies, what I'm really talking about is the deadly sins or the passions of the different personality types. We all have this thing that, you know, we battle and we struggle with. All of the different personality types have it. We all have these things that kind of get in the way of being our best selves. You might butt heads with some people more than others. It's because maybe you're both disintegrating in the same direction, or that person is battling that ugly within themselves, and you are headed straight for doing that same exact thing on your path of disintegration. To give you an example, as a seven, my direction of disintegration goes to one, which is the reformer. Now the reformer, they can be a really great person with lots of passion and goals and things going on and they're changing the world, right? They're reforming, they're making the world a better place. Conversely, they can have a problem with being a perfectionist. And as a seven, when I disintegrate toward that number one, I start being a perfectionist. So I, when I am under stress, when I am disintegrating, I can be a perfectionist. And I've learned over the years to understand when I'm doing that. Um, it has helped my career. It has helped my overall ability to just calm down and not be so, for lack of a better word, bitchy. <laughs> so when using the Enneagram, that is a really strong tool to have at your fingertips. That direction of disintegration is really important for you to understand, not just for yourself, but also for other personality types. But it does help to know about it from yourself first. And the Enneagram can help you take charge and kind of control that and be like, whoa, I know what's happening with me right now. I know how to step in and just, woo, you know, take a break. That's not the prettiest or best thing to hear about a personality type, but like I said, we all have our passions or deadly sins, we all have our struggles, and we do all have things in our lives that keep us from truly being our best selves all of the time, right? Nobody's perfect all the time or ever. So knowing that can be a strong and powerful tool to help you move past what might be your passion or your deadly sin or your direction of disintegration to help you just be more self-aware, be easier to deal with in life, and have an easier time dealing with others in life. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. You can also find my podcast, blog, and a free coaching assessment quiz on berettafleur.com.